So last week I made a documentary and it's like two minutes long, super short, you can watch it up here, but it just has some shots that I'm really proud of and there's a couple techniques that I used that I think worked really, really well and I wanna talk about them today, kind of break down how I lit this project because usually I'm working in outdoor environments where the only lighting source I have is the sun and this one I actually got to be in a dark space and manipulate some lights and I had a lot of fun with it and I pretty much just used one light source the entire time and so I think it's cool to show how much you can do with really just one light. So let's jump into it and look at a couple of these shots. If we look at the first shot here you can see it's just a fade in and it's just a wide of the entire scene basically and again super simple. I mean there's one light lighting this shot pretty much. It's just a 300 watt light at like 5% brightness just pointed straight down from above over his shoulder and it just kind of isolates the surrounding areas. Yeah, it just makes the darkness fall off all around and it lights the scene pretty dang well. Usually if you're lighting a scene like this in a documentary, you would use softer light with diffusion because it makes skin look better. But in this case, I was surprised how good the harsh light, I mean direct out of the light looks and yeah, I think it's something that I could use more often and it's not a bad thing at all. Now something that did help me out here is that because the pottery wheel is this lighter color and you're pushing this harsh light from over the shoulder basically down onto it, you're getting bounce back up so it's acting as this natural bounce that's essentially enhancing that light and creating a soft look back on the face and I think that really helps a lot. So as you can see here, just a collection of some slow motion shots, some close ups some wider shots, just a variety to get the idea of what we're getting here. But again, all one light basically. So in this shot, you can actually see the flaring of that 300 watt light in the background. And I really liked having it super backlit, just giving this edge light and just illuminating the shot with some flaring. And I just thought it was a nice touch. This shot right here is basically just that singular light source coming across here, but I did add a tube light in the back with a bluish color to enhance a little bit and add a bit of color separation. Now in this shot, there was another light. It was just a practical that we had there that was this kind of spotlight, super tungsten looking light. And I basically just pointed at the table, had this really nice warm look. And then you can see in the background here, the cooler look of that main light source that I was talking about. So just a little color contrast. And I used that practical in a couple shots to just aim and point and create, again, some more color contrast. And I think it added a nice touch. So this right here is one of my favorite shots in the entire project just because the angle of the potter with the angle of the camera kind of work in conjunction to just create this crazy dynamic move with the pottery wheel spinning. It's just really, really cool. I love it a lot. But as you can see again, like the lighting is so simple. I mean, it's just one source coming across here, across the top, hitting over here. And then you can see a bit of the warmth coming from that practical that I was talking about before. But really, really simple lighting. I mean, it just gives you this super contrasty look. It's really harsh lighting, but it looks really nice, which is pretty unusual to say. Also, something worth noting is that I shot this project on a vintage lens. It was the Canon FD 35mm f2, which is a fantastic lens, but it is a bit softer because it's vintage. And then I also added a cine bloom filter to further diffuse the image on top of that. So even though the lighting is technically really harsh, there is diffusion going on in the lens choices that can help it look softer. This shot is a great example of the color contrast. So we have this cooler light hitting the rim of this bowl here, but then on the inside, you have that warmer light from the spotlight practical on the other side. So just some cool color contrast. And this shot turned out really cool. As you can see, there's a little bit of blue reflecting from a tube light off to the side, but it's mainly just that singular light source that's making all this work. With a lot of the shots in this short film, I really tried to backlight it, which is something you wanna do if you have a singular point light source, just because it gives you that nice halo look and it's just so much more pleasing to the eye. So for example, like this shot, the sun is behind me, that's my only light source, but that backlight looks a lot better than if it was front lit. And I just tried to stick with that for this and I think it looked really good. Like this shot is just beautiful in my opinion. Another thing that's really cool about this single point light source is that because it's backlit from our subject and it's kind of like a spotlight, we're technically up really close against a wall, but it looks like it falls away completely and adds a lot of depth to the image. So it doesn't look like you're cramped against a wall when in reality we were. It's just a really easy way to add a lot of depth to your image. And then here's a look at just the final shot. As you can see, we have that color contrast again. We have that practical on the right side, that warm color. And then on the left side, we just have that cooler, harsh light and looks great super cool split down the middle and that's it just a quick look at this little documentary that i put together last week it was super fun super creative it took like an hour to shoot i think and it was just really fun to work with lighting and get creative in that way and it was really just a great experience for myself to see how much can be done with a single point light source basically i mean i did have some other lights but for the most part it was just really one light doing 90 percent of the work and 
Yeah, it's crazy what you can create with that. No diffusion. This project was just a really fun experiment into harsh lighting, and I think more people should try it. Get away from diffused lighting a little bit and just see what you can create with a single point light source in a harsher way. And I think you'll like what you find. Anyway, that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you all in the next one.